Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abdu wa rasuluh Allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم أصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تهلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين أما بعد الحمد لله uh, Before we begin just a couple of things uh, for uh, the females um, I have been told that you are allowed to go to the second floor okay, uh, and utilize the second level um, and also for those who are yeah, I've been informed that there are some who uh, may be menstruating and want to come and take benefit from the class. You may go up to the second floor. I've been told that you should not access or you should not enter the carpeted area. You should not enter the, the carpeted area. But you can use and you can uh, sit at the, at the second floor, inshallah. Uh, I've also been informed that there's a representative um, on the female side. Uh, uh, I can inform her name is uh, Suhaila. Uh, she has the book, his Muslim, for those who are in need of the book, and those who require the book can, can look for her and uh, she will give out the book uh, to, to you guys, inshallah. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Um, in our previous lesson, we, uh, we are in the mid, still in the midst of explaining or, uh, or discussing about the Dhikr or the virtue or the goodness or greatness of, of a Dhikr. And last week we were mentioning about how easy it is to perform a zikr that it does not require lots of effort as compared to other physical acts of worship and at the same time it brings a great amount of tremendous benefit. Okay? And the hadith today or tonight in which we will continue from will be related to this, uh, to this point as well. Okay? Where the Prophet وسلم, said in the book is Muslim, وسلم, الله, حسنة, وسلم, also said, Whoever reads one letter from the book of Allah will receive one hasana reward for a good deed. Well, hasana to be ashri amtariha, and one reward is ten times, comes with ten times of its like, tens of it, uh, ten of its like, ten times of its like. La akul, and I'm not saying alif la mim is a half, but rather, or a letter, but rather a letter is alif, well, um, uh, and, and uh, lam is also a letter by itself, and mim is also a letter, and mim is a, is a letter, which means that. The letter is every single letter that you recite, you will get a reward, and the reward is ten times of it. So imagine if you read and recite verses from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, surahs from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is tremendous reward for, for reciting the Quran. Now, um, and we also have the next hadith narrated by Uqbah bin Amir, uh, and Uqbah bin Amir, radiallahu anhu, قال, خرج رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ونحن في الصفة فقال أيكم يحب أن يغدو كل يوم إلى بطحان أو إلى العقيق فيأتي منه بناقتين كوماوين في غير إثم ولا قطيعة رحم The message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came out from his house over there at the, the porch, the الصفة porch is basically the area the front of the, the mosque or the uh, close to the front of the mosque of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam So they were in this area and he said Who of you would like to go out in the morning every day to the valley of Mutan or Laqiq? These two valleys are Laqiq is a valley in, in the city of Medina So basically go to uh, and, and the, the distance between for example al Aqib to let's say the Prophet's mosque is quite a distance It's not, it's not short So which means that it's quite a distance It's not really far but it's uh, average it's, something in between average distance. So which one of you would like to go out? Okay. Uh, and come back with two large sheet camels without committing any sin or severing any penalty. Which means that in Malay we say sanggup pergi. Okay. 
you uh, you really want to go, you, you go out, uh, you go for uh, you go the distance to get these two she camels. Who wants to do this? Okay? Uh, and she camels is similar to cars that we have today, vehicles, cars that we have today. Camels are like the cars that we have today. Okay? So, so it's really something valuable uh, uh, for, for, for them okay? without committing any sin or severing any capital, which means that you go the distance okay? and at the same time you don't need to go through any kind of uh, harm or, or difficulty in attaining it. Okay? All you need to do is to put in a little bit of effort to go distance to get these two she camels without uh, committing any sin uh, or severing any family ties. So they replied, O Messenger of Allah, we would love to, okay, uh, all of us would like this, which means that we would do this. We would go the distance, we would get it because it does not cause us any harm, uh, it causes us benefit basically. فَقُلْنَا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهُ نُحِبُّ ذَلِكُ قَالْ أَفَلَا يَغْضُوا أَحَدُكُمْ إِلَى الْمَسْجِدِ فَيَعْلَمْ أَوْ يَقْرَأَ آيَتَيْنِ مِنْ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ خَيْرُ لَهُ مِنْ نَافَتَيْنِ Would one of you go to the masjid and learn or recite? Okay, learn or recite two verses from the book of Allah Azza wa Jal, mighty and majestic خَيْرُ لَهُ مِنْ نَافَتَيْنِ It's better for him than two camels وَثَلَاثٌ Three verses خَيْرُ لَهُ مِنْ ثَلَاثٌ Better than three أَرْبَعٌ خَيْرُ لَهُ مِنْ أَرْبَعٌ وَمِنْ أَعْدَادِهِنَّ مِنَ الْإِدْلِ And whatever the number may be, four better than four versus better than four camels and whatever the number may be from, from the camels okay? So what it means over here is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is uh, indicating the uh, uh, or basically pointing towards Al-Baqiyat okay? and, uh, and, and comparing it to Al-Faniyat What is Al-Baqiyat? What is Al-Faniyat? Al-Baqiyat is basically things which will stay with you things will, which will exist okay? and these things are the things which you will bring to the hereafter and basically this refers to these verses of the Qur'an learning to recite them or learning them these are the Al-Baqiyat and Allah mentions this in the Qur'an Al-Baqiyat al-Salihat al-Khayrun عند ربك وخيرن عمل Am I correct? I believe it is Surah Al-Kahf Al-Baqiyat al-Salihat Basically Al-Baqiyat al-Salihat Okay, let's let's look for the verse for a moment Al-Man wa Al-Banun Zinatul Hayat Al-Du And this is exactly the same meaning of the hadith In, in Surah Al-Kahf verse number 46 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Al-Man wa Al-Banun Zinatul Hayat Al-Dunya Wa Al-Baqiyat Al-Salihat Al-Khayrun Inda Rabbika Thawaban Wa Khayrun Amal Wealth and children are but adornment of the worldly life But the enduring good deeds are better for, to your Lord for reward and better for one soul Now this hadith helps us understand this verse What it means by this hadith is that all these Camels they are represented as al things which will cease to exist. So, what the verse mentions in Surah Al-Kahf, verse number 46, Al-Mal wal Banun, whatever wealth that you have, whatever children you have, sons, or whatever materialistic things, is going to cease to exist. And al baqiyat as salihat and the enduring good deeds, because they will stay with you in the hereafter, is better for you, Khayrun Inda Rabbik, or better to your Lord for reward and better for one, so for Khayrun Amala. Okay, so this is what the hadith is referring to, this is what the Prophet ﷺ is teaching us. These she camels are just material six things which will cease to exist, which, will, uh, which are temporary, which you're not going to bring to the hereafter. Okay, but with all these verses, you will bring them in the, uh, or, or you will bring them with you in the, in the hereafter. Okay, so basically, these two hadith over here, uh, uh, they, they refer to, the first one refers to how easy it is to obtain reward just with uh, a small amount of, of words from the Quran. And at the same time as well, with the great reward as well, it indicates um, basically Al-Quran. Al al basically Al-Quran, um, a, a recitation of the, of the Quran, okay, and the greatness of recitation of the Quran. Now why is the Quran being mentioned under the Fadl Dikr, or the virtue of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Now the reason for this is because Al-Quran is actually Afdal al-Dhikr. It's the best form of remembrance, the best form of dhikr. And 
uh, the most highest in terms of uh, all sorts of categories of of the victim. And when a person chooses something to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with, the Quran is the best form of a dhikr that he can choose to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with. And the reason for this is because it is the words or the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, it's the best of speech and the most truthful and the most beneficial. The most truthful and the most and the most beneficial. And it's basically the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in which no falsehood will come to it from in front of it or from behind it. What it means over here is that whatever kind of falsehood cannot argue with the with the Quran. Yeah, and it is the best book that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed to the best of creations, Muhammad bin Abdullah uh, Salawatullahi wa salamuhu wa barakatuhu alayhi Rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Now the virtue and the greatness, the honor and the high status of the Quran is something that is a matter that is not hidden from, from the Muslims It's something that is very well known For it is the book of Allah, the Lord of the worlds you know, I'm mentioning all of this for us to understand the greatness of the book and it's the speech of the creator of all creation, which means that if you love the speech of your the creations of Allah, love the speech of men, then the words of Allah, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is much greater, greater than that. And it is the firm rope of Allah. That means your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, firm rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala depends on your connection with the with the Quran. And it is the dhikr which is full of wisdom. Okay, and it is the Sarat al Mustaqim. It's essentially the Sarat al Sarat al Mustaqim, the Shifa. It will never wear out from lots of uh, refutations against it, okay, which means that no sort of refutation will be able to will be able to decrease the Quran from its value. Who speaks with it will speak the truth, and whoever acts upon it will be rewarded, and whoever judges by it will be just, and whoever calls to it will be guided to the true straight. Part, eh? and and the Quran basically is the, the, the whole of the Quran is basically basically the book of of, of dhikr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eh? so dhikrullah or a dhikr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remembrance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is essentially the pulp and the core of the Quran eh? the pulp and the core of the of the Quran and it is the the soul uh, of it basically a dhikr is the soul of the Quran as well as how we mentioned that the soul of all acts of worship is actually a a dhikr, okay? and it is the one of the main uh, objectives of the of the Quran. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions okay, in Surah Sa'ad, verse number twenty-nine, "Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun liyadabbaru ayatihi wa liyadadakkaru ulul albab." A book which we have revealed to you, O Muhammad, which is a blessed book, liyadabbaru okay, for the people to contemplate upon it, upon its verses. And liyadadakkaro, this is the word being used by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, liyadadakkaro, to remind, to be a form of remembrance for the ulul alba, for the thinkers, for those who use their mind intellectually. Waqal, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, inna fi dhalik, indeed in it, in that, which is the Quran. Now dhalik is that, it's not this. Okay? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses this kind of, this form of expression a lot in the Quran. Tilka. Ayah, for example. Okay, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to as that? Because he is trying to indicate that the status of whatever that is being mentioned. Ula'ika, for example, they, not you all, for example, they are the ones. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to them as a very high thing. Okay, so over here as well, that, which is the book of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to it as a very high uh, thing which has a very high status. Um, la dhikra is a remembrance liman kana lahu qalbun for whosoever has heart has a heart or al-qassam okay, or uh, basically turn their ears to it or al-qassam wa huwa shahid and he is witnessing it surah qaf verse number 30, 37 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says inna hadha al-qur'an yahdi lillati hiya aqwam indeed this Quran guides to the most correct or the most uh, proper things. Aqwam. Why you mushirul mu'mini and it gives glad tidings to the believers. Alladina amaluna salihati anna lahum ajran kabira. 
those who perform good deeds, righteous deeds, that they will get attain a great reward. Surah Isra, verse number nine. Wa qala in Allah subhanahu wa taala mentions, "Fadat kir bil Qurani may yaqaf wa'in." And remember or remind with the Quran. Use the Quran as a form of remembrance. Fadat kir bil Quran. Those who fear the wa'in, those who fear the warning of Allah, the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Surah Qaf, verse number forty-five. And there are many other verses which indicate to this. What it means over here is that the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the Qur'an and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that it is a form of zikr. Rather, in many other verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself named the Qur'an as a zikr. Named the book, named the, 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 the holy book Al-Qur'an as, as a zikr. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Anbiya, verse number 50. وَهَذَا ذِكْرُ مُبَارَكٌ أَنزَلْنَاهُ أَفَأَنْتُمْ لَهُ مُنْكِرُونَ And this is a zikr. So, this zikr over here, which is the Qur'an, which is blessed. We have revealed it to you and Zalahu. Sorry, uh, we have revealed it. Afa antum lahu Are you all going to deny it? Wa Ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions wa anzalna ilayka dhikr li tubayyina lil nas ma nuzila ilayhim. And we have revealed to you the, the dhikr to explain to the people what has been revealed to them. Surah so, Nahal verse number 44. Dhalika natluhu alayka min al ayat wa dhikril hakim. That is from, that is what we have recited upon you or to you from the verses and from the dhikr al-hakim from the wise al-dhikr from the dhikr which is full of wisdom Surah Ali Imran verse number 58 أو عجيبتم أن جاءكم ذكر من ربكم قال تعالى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says are you not are you surprised or are you amazed that uh, a dhikr has come to you أن جاءكم ذكر from, from your Lord من ربكم على رجل منكم to just a man from amongst you لينذرهم to, to warn you. Surah Al-A'raf verse number 69. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikr wa inna lahu lahafizun. We have revealed to you the dhikr and we will protect it. Wa inna lahu lahafizun. We will definitely protect it. Al-Hijr uh, al verse number 9. Sa'ad wal Qur'an di dhikr. Okay, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Sa'ad. Uh, first verse of Sa'ad, the Qur'an is uh, possesses or, or, or is, uh, has a dhikr. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِالذِّكْرِ لَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ وَإِنَّهُ لَكِتَابٌ عَزِيزٌ Those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, those who disbelieve in the dhikr when it arrived to them, وَإِنَّهُ لَكِتَابٌ عَزِيزٌ And indeed it is a book which is aziz, which is uh, high and mighty, aziz. لَا يَأْتِيهِ, لا يأتيه بَاطِلٌ مِنْ بَيْنِ يَدَيْهِ وَلَا مِنْ خَلْفِهِ No sort of bātil, no sort of falsehood come to it from its front, from its back, Tanzilum, or Tanzilum min Hakimin Hamid. It's a revelation from the Hakim Hamid, which is referring to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Surah Fusilah, verse number forty-one to forty-two. And there are many other verses as well which indicate this. The point over here is that it all indicates that the Quran is zikr, or the Quran also possess or, or contains as a zikr. And that is why the scholar uh, uh, Sheikh Sa'id bin Wahab Al Khatani he mentions these this uh, hadith. He is trying to indicate to us that the Quran is also a form of zikr. But not only that, eh, beyond that, the Quran is the highest form of, of a zikr actually. Eh, the highest form of a zikr. Eh, and now in the second hadith, especially in the second hadith, the first hadith refers to the virtue of recitation. Now in the second hadith, Prophet mentions, فَيَعْلَمْ أَوْ يَقْرَمْ he learns or he recites. This can refer to learning or understanding the verses of Allah, or this can mean learning to recite the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if it means learning to uh, understand the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this is exactly actually the uh, point or the objective of, of the Quran. Okay? Now, as we understand that we are recommended and we are encouraged to recite the Quran and it is a form of zikr but it can only be recited truly with haqqatilawati with true recitation only if it is uh, only if three things are fulfilled number one is that the person recites it with true recitation uh, sorry not true recitation proper recitation uh, which means that the proper way to recite he recites it with, with tajweed uh, with proper words with proper pronunciation now second is to remember and to know or basically uh, sorry is to remember uh, understand and remember okay? so 
remembers the words of Allah and understand the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember over here does not necessarily mean memorize. What it means here is that you really know that it is from the Quran and you understand the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Third, once you understand the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you act upon the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what is referred to in the verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ula'ika yu'minu nabi. Ladina yatlunahu haqqa tilawati. Those who recite the Quran with true recitation, they are those who will believe in it. Ula'ika yu'minu nabi. Okay? So you cannot believe in something that you recite and you don't understand. It does not make sense that you believe in something that you recite and you don't understand. You have faith in something that you don't understand at all. Okay? So what it means by true recitation is with understanding and with action to act upon what you understand from the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? And that is why in uh, the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded his servants and encouraged them to recite the Quran and also contemplate okay, in many verses in the Quran. So for example, in Surah An-Nisa, verse number 82, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنِ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اِخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا Do they not contemplate upon the Quran? If it were to come from other than Allah, they will find so many differences, so many uh, deviation, so many things which contradict, so many contradictions in, in it. Wa qawla ta'ala in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَفَلَا يَتَذَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَى قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا Do they not contemplate upon the Qur'an or are there locks upon, upon hearts? Surah Muhammad verse number 24. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that He revealed the Qur'an so for the purpose of contemplating it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Sawah verse number 29, Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka, we mentioned this, Mubarakun liyatabbaru ayati liyatabbaru We reveal the Qur'an so that you contemplate it Wa liyatadakkara ulul ulul alba And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions That the reason for the person to not be able to attain guidance And for those, uh, and, and the reason the people went astray from the Surat al-Mustaqim Is because of their neglect And them abandoning contemplation upon the Qur'an And being arrogant from listening to the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I mentioned this in Surah Al-Mu'minun, verses number 66 to 68. آيَاتِي تُتْلَى عَلَيْكُمْ My verses have, were, were recited to you. قَدْ كَانَتْ آيَاتِي تُتْلَى عَلَيْكُمْ فَكُنْتُمْ عَلَىٰ عَقَوْبِكُمْ تَنْتِسُونَ But you turn away. Okay, this is my simple translation. Okay, it is a more detailed explanation for it. مُسْتَكْبِرِينَ بِهِ سَالَمًا تَهْجُرُونَ You were arrogant and you turn away. Tahjur basically means that you abandon it. You don't turn to it. You don't give attention to it. Tahjur, hajar. Okay. Did they not contemplate upon the speech? Okay. Or did they come? Uh, or did, did they come to them? What has not arrived to their forefathers? What it means is that uh, severe, severe punishment. Over here. Okay. It means over here is, is is that what it means over here is that if they were to contemplate upon the Quran, okay, they would attain iman. And it would prevent them from al-kufr wal asyan from disbelief and sinning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? And therefore it indicates that tadabbur Qur'an, contemplation upon the Qur'an calls to all goodness and protects from all, from, from all evil. Okay? Now, um, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also, not only that, He also uh, basically talks uh, lowly about uh, or basically warns the, the, the mu'minin, the believers, if they do not uh, have khushu, okay? have khushu which means that they, they do not really give true attention when they listen to the Qur'an. Okay? And, and he warns them in a way that we should not be like the disbelievers. Okay? This is basically the attitude of the disbelievers towards the Qur'an. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Hadid verse number 16, Alam yakhid al-ladhina amanu an takhsha'a kulubahum wa kulubuhum li dhikri Allahi wa ma nazala min al-haq. Has it not come to the believers okay, that they should lower or humble their hearts, takhsha'a, have khushu' in their hearts to the dhikr of Allah, okay, to the dhikr of Allah, which is the Qur'an, wa ma nazala min al-haq, and what has descended from the truth. Wa la yakunu and they should not become kalladina utul kitab like those who were given the book min qabl before faqala alayhimul amad and then time passed by time passed by for a very long time faqala alayhimul amadu faqasat kulubuhum and then their hearts become hardened wa kathiru minhum fasikul and this indicates that 
your relationship with the Quran will cause softness and will cause your heart to not harden and the more further away you are from the Quran the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the more susceptible your heart is to be hardened by other factors okay? and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions in another verse that the true believers they increase in their iman when they recite it okay? and when they contemplate upon its verses innamal mu'minun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah al-fal verse number 2 innamal mu'minun the, the believers are truly those whom when they are reminded of Allah or either do hear Allah or when Allah is mentioned wajidat kulubuhum their hearts will tremble wa idha tuliyat alayhim ayatuhu and when his verses are being recited to them zadathum imana their faith will increase wa ala rabbihim yatawakkalun and upon their Lord they uh, they, they put hope or basically have tawakkal now that is why um, Imam Al-Ajubi rahimahullah he has this uh, a famous book, uh, I believe, uh, Adab Hamlatul Quran, uh, or Akhlaq Hamlatul Quran, sorry, yeah, Akhlaq Hamlatul Quran, the etiquettes of those who uh, carry the Quran, yeah, for those who carry the Quran. Uh, he says, yeah, he says, Fal mu'min al yeah, so the believer who is truly using his mind, his aqil, if he were to recite the Quran, the Quran becomes like a mirror to him. Okay, so he opens up the Quran in front of him. It doesn't become like something like, you know, if you recite and then just like that. No. From the Quran, he sees what is good from his actions. And what is bad and what is detestable from his, from his actions. And, and, and therefore, whatever that his Lord uh, prohibits him, he keeps away from him, he's careful from, uh, about it. And whatever his Lord instills uh, 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 fear through the verses, he fears them. And he fears these things that his Lord mentions. And whatever that his Lord encourages him towards, he starts to have an encouragement, uh, he starts to be encouraged in it. And he hopes for it. Whosoever has this characteristic, this is whosoever, this is, if a person has this character, or if this is the characteristic of the, a person who recites the Quran, or is close to this kind of sifa, then he will only be regarded as truly reciting the, the Quran. And given true right to the, to the Quran. Okay? Taken care of the Quran truly. Wa kana lahu al Quran shahidan, wa shafi'an, wa anisan, wa hirzan. And then the Quran will be a witness, an intercessor, uh, something that will be with him in the hereafter. Wa man kana hada wasfu nafa nafsahu wa nafa ahda. And whosoever, whosoever has this characteristic, he will be able to benefit uh, himself and the people around him. This is why you see many people they recite the Quran, but they still get angry. For example, they still have problems in their lives because why they don't understand the Quran. They don't try to understand the Quran. They recite the Quran and they think that the Quran is just something that is magical, something change everything in their life. It doesn't work that way. You have to understand the verses of your of your law. And uh, his parents will attain and his children will attain all sorts of goodness in the dunya and, and the akhirah. Okay? And that is why in, uh, in Sahih Muslim, there are two hadith in which Prophet Sallallahu mentions the first one Inna Allah yarfa' bihada al-kitab aqwaman wa yadu'u akhari Allah raises a certain group of people with this book and lowers with this book certain other people what it means by raise and low, lower over here is that raise through the knowledge and they, them being able to act upon the Quran them being able to instill the Quran fulfill whatever that is in the Quran in their lives as compared to those who recite the Quran yeah, but do not fulfill whatever that is in the Quran in their in their lives and therefore they become they become low people because they know the truth they know what is good for them but it is not seen in in them and the prophet also mentions another hadith sahih muslim al quran hujjatun laka aw alak in the quran is an argument for you or against you it's an argument for you if you act upon it and it's an argument against you if you don't do whatever that you understand from from the quran and that is why um patada rahimahullah said Nobody sits or be, be around this Qur'an 
illa qawla anhu except he stands from it or he starts to leave or he ends his session with the Quran bi ziyadah aw nuqsan with an increase or decrease and what it means over here is that with an increase of iman and goodness if he were to act upon it or decrease in iman and goodness if he were to neglect it and were to, to lose whatever that he he has recited okay so point over here is that uh, okay that we must understand even with all these hadith that which have been mentioned about the virtue of reciting the quran just recitation we have to understand that there is something beyond as well which is not just the recitation of the quran the recitation of the quran is only the beginning okay and this is something that i want to emphasize before we move on to other parts of the book because in our society there are some uh, people in our society who think that the quran or recitation of the quran is the only thing that they need to need to achieve okay now some may argue for example start with them we don't know the arabic version but today uh, arabic uh, we don't know arabic therefore we cannot understand the quran today there are so many translations you can find translations of the quran anywhere in all sorts of of languages you have even a japanese quran uh, german translated quran and i have i have got my hands on some of these as well okay? so point is that yes you may not get the most the, the best uh, the best form of the quran but you can take the steps to start to uh, understand some of the things that you you recite okay now be, besides that as well you can have a teacher teach you the quran uh, and teach you how to understand the verses of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, and this step must be taken first okay? if not the quran will not have an effect to 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 you okay? if not the quran will not have an effect to to you um, and that's why uh, Al Fudail bin Iyad he mentions that Inna Unzil Al Quran liyumala bihi. Indeed, the Quran was revealed for it to be acted upon, to be amalkan. But the Fadanas kiraatahu amala. Then the people took its recitation as the deed itself. What it means is the punya amal tu jadi the punya bacaan aja. Okay, but it's not supposed to be the recitation. The recitation earns you rewards. But that is not the objective, that is not the purpose of the Qur'an. Okay? That is why uh, the purpose of the Qur'an is for you to understand and that is why it's the speech of, of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that already indicates that you need to understand because it is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now think about it. How many years have you spent in your lives understanding the words of the people around you? Understanding the things that you learn in school and whatever it may be. But you, you are not even understanding the words of your own Lord. The words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How long are you going to spend not understanding the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Right? Okay, so, uh, and, uh, and therefore the scholars, they actually give very uh, considerable amount of attention to this, to this matter, which is to take concern of understanding the Quran, contemplation of the Quran, uh, and, and uh, what is to be attained from from all these in terms of of rewards in terms of of rewards and without uh, these etiquettes and adab that we mentioned okay, if you don't recite the quran in this approach okay, you won't attain all the great rewards okay, and and rather the quran will be against you and the quran will be your enemy in the in the day after okay uh, and in a hadith, Uthman bin Affan mentions Khairukum man ta'allam al-Qur'ana wa'allam In the best, uh, uh, sorry, narrated by Uthman bin Affan In a hadith narrated by Uthman, Uthman bin Affan The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said The best of you are those who learn the Qur'an and then teach them okay? Now, what it means over here is that From the best of the servants of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Are those who teach the words of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Teach people to understand the words of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Okay, and uh, people and uh, use people easily think that oh this means that you know teach recitation. Recitation is only a small part of it. Allah al Quran wa Allama is like we mentioned, true understanding and true knowledge of the Quran requires you to understand the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore teaching the Quran is not only teaching recitation but it also includes teaching the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? Now and that is why um, uh, Sheikh Sa'id bin Wahb al Qahtani mentions these uh, hadith, okay, this, this hadith which point to the virtue of, of the Quran. Because the Quran basically is the highest form of dhikr, and 
what is required from the Quran is to understand the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is how it becomes the, the highest form of zikr. And that's why in many acts of worship the Quran is being given considerable uh, given attention to. For example in the prayers, in Salah, Prophet used to recite lots of verses when the situation allows it. And there are people who can stay with him to pray with him, for example. There are no ordinary people, for example. During Ramadan, for example, he would recite lots of verses of the Quran with Jibreel. Okay? Ramadan is literally the month of the Quran and the Quran should be given uh, lots of attention to during, during Ramadan. Okay? So, fasting, even in fasting, Quran is given attention to. Even in prayers, Quran is given attention to. And there are many other, other examples. Okay? Now, uh, Ibn Mas'ud, uh, yeah, I will, uh, will end with this before we move on to the next uh, hadith. Uh, Ibn Mas'ud mentions, radiallahu anhu, Man kana yuhib an ya'lama annahu yuhib Allah. Whosoever wants to really compare or make a comparison or make a measurement of how much he loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fal yu'rid nafsu ala al-Qur'an. Okay, then, take the Qur'an and basically see his, uh, himself with the Qur'an, how he is with the Qur'an. فَإِنَ حَبَّ الْقُرْآنِ If he were, if he loves the Qur'an, فَإِنَ حَبَّ الْقُرْآنِ فَهُوَ يُحِبُّ اللَّهِ Then he loves Allah. فَإِنَّ مَا الْقُرْآنِ كَلَمُ اللَّهِ For indeed the Qur'an is the words of, words of Allah. Okay? And the words, uh, or basically the words found in the Qur'an, how great it is, okay? it goes back to how great the speaker is, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So his greatness is because the speaker is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So understanding all these points helps you to remind yourself and to uh, basically tell yourself that when you recite the Quran, you shouldn't think of it as just, you know, as a form of recitation. You should see it as the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What have you given for the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Okay? Now, and love towards the Quran cannot be developed just through recitation and memorization. Okay? If you have love to uh, for recitation and memorization then you are a correct you're just a reciter you are just a reader you just love to read okay? and most of the people love to read in front of people okay? it's not it's not really recitation because you don't benefit anything for it from it from your, for yourself is there somebody who you know sings uh, or basically because the recitation of the quran you need to recite it with with a good voice okay? or with a, with a good voice basically is there anybody who recites and then listens to his own voice and then is impressed by his own voice is that is that the purpose or motive of, of, of the Qur'an? Is that how, what is going to lead you to love the Qur'an? That's not, that is not the thing that is going to lead you to love, to love the Qur'an truly. What is going to lead you to love the Qur'an is when you understand how the Qur'an works, if you understand the nature of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? Now, um, I'd like to move on to the other hadith. Okay? Um, but inshallah, I think we can, we can finish it by, by next week. How many minutes do we have left until the Aisha? Five? Okay, let's see if we have time. Okay, so I just want to give you an example. Okay? I just want to give you an example of how the Quran works. Okay, and how the, uh, basically the sources of the religion works. Now, in a hadith, the Prophet ﷺ mentions, In al halal bayin, wa in al harama bayin, wa baynahuma umurun mushtabihat, la ya'lamuhun na kathirun min al The halal is clear, the haram is clear. Now, between this halal and haram, there are things which are you know, mushtabihat. Mushtabihat means that it's between halal and haram. There is obscurity in it. You're unsure. For many people, لا يعلمون كثير من الناس. There are some who really understand. These are people of true, true knowledge. لا يعلمون كثير من الناس. The Prophet ﷺ said, "Come from the tabash of hat, from the stubborn of dini and wildly." Now, whosoever keeps away okay, from this shubhat, okay, he doesn't involve himself in it. He yeah, doesn't put himself in in, in the shubhat. He has freed himself in terms of his religion and his honor. What it means is that he has protected his religion and his honor. Okay? Nobody can say anything about his religion, nobody can say anything about his, his honor. His honor is protected, his religion is protected, he's not going to corrupt his religion, he's not going to corrupt his, his honor. Whosoever involved in his shubuhat, eventually, this is one of the interpretations, will lead himself to, to haram, to prohibitions, to sins. Okay? And then Prophet Hassan mentions an example, it's like, you know, uh, being in a sanctuary of a king and you go close to the sanctuary, to the, to the boundaries, okay? at any point of time, you can go out of the, of the area. It's like, for example, in our times, it's like the prohibited areas, right? You, 
you cannot even come close. It's not only just that you are prohibited from going to that place, you don't come close as well. The cameras will take pictures of you and then you can get fined. And, and so this is the example of the Prophet in the, in the hadith. He says, um, Like the shepherd who raises his sheep around the boundary, his sheep will get lost eventually. Eh? Or enter another person's uh, place. Eh? Uh, the boundary of Allah is basically the haram things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited us from. Indeed, inside the body there is this uh, uh, lump of flesh. If it is right, the whole body is right. If the body is or if the heart is corrupted, the whole body is corrupted, uh, or the, the flesh is corrupted, the whole body is corrupted, Allah wa hiya Indeed, it is the, it is the heart. Now look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran in Surah Al-Imran. وَالَّذِي أَنزَلَ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ مِنْهُ آيَاتٌ مُحْكَمَاتٌ هُنَّ أُمُّ الْكِتَابِ وَأُخَرُ مُتَشَابِعًا Same words he used. Okay? He is the one who revealed to you the book. وَالَّذِي uh, أَنزَلَ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ مِنْهُ From it are uh, verses which are muhkamat. Muhkamat are basically very clear verses. Hunna umul kitab. They are the foundation of the book. Wa ukhuru mutashabihat. And there are other verses which are mutashabihat. Mutashabihat means that not everybody understands them easily. Because they give, uh, how do you say, uh, possibilities of other, uh, other interpretations. Okay? Of course, the true ones who understand the Quran truly, they will understand what is meant by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But those who الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ زَيْغٌ Those who have deviation or in their hearts, they يَتَّبِعُونَ مَا تَشَابَهُ مِنْهُ بِتِغَاءَ الْفِتْنَةِ وَبْتِغَاءَ التَّعْوِيلِ They will start to leave the muhkamah, leave the base of uh, or the fundamentals or the foundation of the Qur'an, the verses which are very clear, and they start to involve themselves in this not really that clear and require higher levels of knowledge, for example, in these sorts of verses. And they will start to argue and they will start to say, oh, this is the meaning and therefore they start to make uh, uh, decisions which actually contradict the muhkamat in the end. Okay? Because they want fitna, they want people, they want commotion. They want people to have, uh, you know, lots of commotion, people to talk about this, people to talk about that. Ibtigha'a ta'wili Wa ma ya'lamu ta'wilahu illa Allah And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who truly knows the The ta'wil, the interpretation of these verses Now then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Wa amma al-ladhina fi Wa ma ya'lamu ta'wilahu illa Allah Wa al-rasikhuna fi al-ilm And those who are Deeply rooted in their knowledge Those who have true knowledge Qalu, what they say? What they say? Amanna bihi kullu min indi rabbina Wa al-rasikhuna fi al-ilm Yaquluna amanna bihi kullu min indi rabbina We believe in it Everything is wrong from our Lord. Why do we say this? Because it's not the point that every time you understand everything truly. Okay? Because you knowledge is the means for you to attain something higher, as we mentioned last week. Okay? And at times you won't really understand the true nature of, of things. Most of the time. And this even happened with the with the sahabas. Okay? With the sahabas, the companions of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Knowledge is the first step, yes, of course. Okay? But the next is to reach faith. Okay? Because sometimes you may not understand something truly. But you, what is required from you is to have faith in it. One day you will start to understand it. But the point is to have faith in it even when you don't understand, even when you are lacking in terms of, of knowledge. Because why? Let's say for example it's a prohibition. Or it's a command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? But you may not understand why Allah commands this, why Allah prohibits this. But the fact that you know that it's prohibited by Allah, commanded by Allah, you must understand that it's what Allah has commanded, it's what Allah has permitted. I stop here. I follow what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded. Kullu min indi rabbina. Wa ma yadhakkaru illa. Wa ma yadhakkaru illa. Wa ma yadhakkaru illa ulul ulul alba. Rabbana la tuzir kulubana ba'ad. And then Allah mentions the dua, the dua of these people who are deeply rooted in knowledge, asking Allah not to deviate their hearts, which is basically the people whom Allah mentions in the in the verse. Now, why do I mention this verse after mentioning the hadith? In the hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi mentions about the heart. In the hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi mentions about mush, mushtabihat. Okay? And it's exactly the same actually. The heart, if it is corrupted, it will lead you to follow mushtabihat. And the heart, if it is good, it will lead you to basically follow the clear things 
and abandon the, the Mushtabihat. Okay? So you see over here, this is how you understand the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how the Quran will help affect you in your life. Okay? Of course, when you read the Quran, recite the Quran just merely like that, you may not understand. Oh, Rasakuna fil Allah Allah's talking about deeply rooted. People who have deeply rooted knowledge, for example. Oh, Zaibun, who, who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referring to, for, uh, to those who, who have, uh, when he mentions about those who have deviation in their hearts. Okay? But when you read the hadith and when you understand that it's actually similar in terms of the words and in terms of the pattern that, that is in the Quran, you understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to here. So this is just an example about why it's important to understand the Quran, verses of the Quran, and learn the, the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And this is actually the true way of, of Islam. Now, finally, before we end, the, uh, all these things, the Book of Allah, Iman, is not something that you can uh, understand just through your mere minds. It's not something that is to be felt. Some people, for example, in the community, say, this is good, this, is, this feels good, why can't we do it? It's not, that is not the point. The point is whether is that commanded by Allah, is that taught by the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because Iman cannot be understood by just your mind and therefore you have to know, you have to receive it from the words of Allah and the way of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentions in the Qur'an وَكَذَلِكَ أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ رُوحٌ مِنْ عِنْدِنَا That is how we had uh, revealed to you a soul from us a soul means what brings you life what, what does this soul refer to? The book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet. Because after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, Ma kunta tadri man kitab wal iman. You did not know the, the, the nature of the book, you did not know the nature of al iman. Walakin, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, it's a light, it's, it's something that we have bestowed to you, a guidance that we have bestowed to you, light that we have bestowed to you, and therefore you now understand. Allah is talking to the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now you understand the book, now you understand the true nature of and therefore you have to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guidance, uh, his guidance okay, if you want to truly seek the uh, truly understand the book of Allah and uh, and your faith okay, and, and faith towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Wallahu ta'ala alam subhanakallahu wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyina muhammad alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen